Good morning and welcome to our service. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is excellent and his glory above heaven and earth. Our opening hymn this morning, number 181, God Forgave My Sin. Psalm number one. Blessed is the man that hath not walked in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stood in the way of sinners, and hath not sat in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the waterside, that bringeth forth his fruit in due season, whose leaf also doth not wither, and look whatsoever he doeth, it shall prosper. As for the ungodly, it is not so with them, but they are like the chaff, which the wind scattereth away from the face of the earth. Therefore the ungodly shall not be able to stand in the judgment, neither the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first lesson is written in the 17th chapter of the book of the prophet Jeremiah, 
beginning at the fifth verse. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? If the Lord tests the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Here ends the first lesson. The Judea. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth does worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee, cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The holy church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. The Father of an infinite majesty, Thine honorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst not abhor the virgin's womb. When thou hast overcome the sharpness of death, thou hast opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. O Lord, save thy people and bless thine heritage. Govern them and lift them up forever. Day by day we magnify thee, and we worship thy name ever world without end. Well, save, O Lord, to keep us this day without sin. O Lord, have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, let thy mercy light upon us, as our trust is in thee. O Lord, in thee have I trusted, let me never be confounded. Our second lesson is written in the 15th chapter. St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, beginning at the 12th verse. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how come some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testified of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being.
For if all die in Adam, though all may be made alive in Christ. Here ends the second lesson. The benedict. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people, and has raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we be delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high has visited us, to give light to them to sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet to the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Gospel hymn number 234, His Name is Wonderful.
We gather today via social media in the midst of a pandemic as like-minded individuals with a common purpose. To give thanks to Almighty God through our Lord Jesus Christ for all that we have and all that we are. We record this service in one of the many houses of God around the world to worship our Savior through music and song, to hear his inspired word from the Holy Bible, and to remember him who died on the cross so that our sins may be forgiven. Our reaction when gathered together is normally to give a resounding chorus of praise and thanksgiving. To make our collective thoughts one and to listen as God addresses himself to all of us as a gathered group. This does not change even if we are gathered in our homes as individuals or families if the pandemic prevents us from gathering together. God also seeks to address us as individuals. A reason why we should make time for private prayer and solitary reading of the Bible wherein God will reveal to us the secrets contained therein. Private devotions enable us to savor the Word of God. St. Gregory the Great said, Through the grace of God, certain passages of the Bible or other sacred readings are better understood when the divine word is read privately. The soul, conscious of its faults and recognizing the truth of what it has read in scripture, is struck by the dart of grief and pierced by the sword of guilt so that the soul wishes to do nothing but weep and wash away its stains with floods of tears. Often it is through personal prayer and contemplation on Scripture that the Lord speaks to us directly. Through the Holy Spirit, God speaks to us and reminds us that what we are doing is either right or wrong. Many things may be okay in the sight of society, but wrong in the sight of God. That is why, as Christians, it is important that we spend some one-on-one -on -one time with Christ. Have you ever seen a picture of a man or woman sitting with the Bible open on their laps, hands folded, and clearly absorbed in what they have read and in the God whom they have met in that reading? They have experienced a personal and intimate encounter with God. And it has caused them to stop reading and to concentrate with all their heart, with all their soul, with all their mind, and with all their strength on what was revealed to them personally in that reading. That is a challenge for each of us this week. Pick up our Bibles as often as time allows and hear through those sacred readings what God is saying to us personally. Five minutes a day before we head out to work, before we shovel the driveway, before we milk the cows, before we clean the house, before we go for a walk. Just five minutes a day, we'll begin a personal encounter with him who loves us more than we can ever imagine. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior has commanded and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O God, whose blessed Son was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil and make us the people of God and ears of eternal life. Grant us, we beseech thee, that having this hope we may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear again with power and great glory, we may be made like unto him in his eternal and glorious kingdom where with thee, O Father, and thee, O Holy Ghost, he lives and reigns, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we surely, trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Hymn number 295, I Serve a Risen Savior. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives, he lives within my heart. In our worldwide Anglican prayer cycle, we pray for the Anglican Church in Japan. 
In our diocesan prayer cycle, we pray for the Parish of the Resurrection, Sydney. In our DCS prayer cycle, we pray for St. John, St. Elephant. We pray for our own parish of Milton and Russell, the parish of St. Peter's Cathedral, St. George's Montague, St. Albans, Surrey, and the parish of Wolf Island, Ontario. We pray for God's gift of health and healing for Nancy Rackham, Pat Willis, Sylvia Moore, Bill Lutie, Carol McDonald, Donna McDougall, Helen Strilioff, Lucy and Dave Archer, Kara Kempton, Peter Selfworth, Spencer Waite, and Joyce Coles. We pray for all who have suffered by, have been affected by the COVID-19 virus and for all who suffer from invidious discrimination. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee, and has promised that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their request. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world the knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. The peace of God passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, not your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, be amongst you this day, and remain with you always. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 327, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise. <clears throat> Immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light inaccessible, hid from our eyes, most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days, almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting unhasting and silent as light nor wanting nor wasting thou rulest in might thy justice like fountains high soaring above thy clouds which are fountains of goodness and love to all life thou givest to both great and small in all life thou livest the true life of all we blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree and wither and perish but not changeth thee great father of glory pure father Light. Thine angels adore thee, all veiling their sight. All praise we would render, O oh, help us to see. Tis only the splendor of light hideth thee. Immortal, invisible, God only wise. In light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the ancient of days. Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise.